Welcome everyone to the screencast. Uh, the goal of the screencast is to cover the events that the gathering storm, the events that led to or caused the onset of World War II in as much brevity as possible. This is a really complex era and the goal is to get through this um, as not necessarily as quickly as possible to cover the the main events without getting bogged down into a lot of these really complicated details. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so we want to talk about the beginnings of the, uh, the causes of World War II. Got to go all the way back to the end of World War I. So here we are, the Versailles Treaty uh, signed in 1919. Uh, of course, the fighting stops in November of 1918. Uh, but it takes a, a few months for the, the actual peace treaty to be signed. Uh, now Wilson, he sailed over with his 14 points. His, that was his goal, is to make a just and lasting peace. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Uh, the Versailles Treaty was a really harsh punishment of Germany, and uh, it created the economic conditions which allowed a charismatic leader to rise to power. And that charismatic leader was Adolf Hitler, not a very nice dude. Sometimes charismatic leaders turn out to be uh, great, sometimes not so much. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. Speaking of charismatic leaders, here's another one. Uh, Benito Mussolini, he rises to power. He and his uh, black shirts, they march on Rome. They form a new government and very quickly dismantle the uh, democratic government that was in place at the time and replaces it with his Italian fascism. Um, he promises to return Italy to the glory of the Roman Empire and everything else. A lot of people put uh, all their faith in him to make Italy great again. Okay, let's keep going. Speaking of charismatic leaders yet again, a little, uh, little over a decade after Benito Mussolini rises to power in Italy. Uh, Adolf Hitler, he is named Chancellor of Germany. He goes from about nine years prior, a political prisoner for a few months, and slowly over that nine-year span, uh, rises to Chancellor of Germany. Uh, and they're, again, uh, trying to keep this as brief as possible. I know that uh, there are a lot of facts and details in how this man rose from political prisoner to chancellor of Germany, uh, but this video is, uh, for the sake of brevity, we're going to go ahead and just uh, acknowledge that he rises to power in Germany and becomes chancellor in 1933. Now shortly thereafter, just to about a month after, or the very next month, uh, Hitler uses uh, this quote-unquote attack, uh, the Reichstag burns. There's a lot of um, theories on exactly how it caught on fire and who did it and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but uh, their parliament is, is, uh, is burned. And Hitler uses this perceived attack uh, specifically on his political party, the NSDAP or the Nazis, as an excuse to consolidate power uh, for himself. Um, this happens a lot in history. When a nation perceives itself under attack, um, they tend to give up uh, power and authority to their government uh, in return for the promise of safety. And uh, it's true here, 1933 in Germany, and it's been true elsewhere in history. So now let's talk about these two dictators, and uh, we'll get to uh, Japan in a moment, but let's talk about uh, the early aggressions of these two dictators. So first we have the Italo-Ethiopian War. It's begun on October 1935. Um, uh, Italy invades Ethiopia, one of the last independent nations in Africa. Uh, it's universally condemned by the League of Nations, but they are uh, almost powerless to do anything about it. Um, the really ineffective economic sanctions, and um, really what it did is just increase the hostilities between uh, the quote-unquote European democracies and the fascist governments. So basically, England and France versus Germany and Italy. Okay, um, also Hitler um, 
wasn't really supposed to build up his military quite uh, the way that he did per the Versailles Treaty, but he did anyway. Um, one of the issues of appeasement, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, he assists with the Spanish Civil War, and this really demonstrates uh, to the world the power uh, of uh, Hitler's army, uh, specifically the Luftwaffe, his, his um, air force, and their blitzkrieg style of warfare. Uh, Hitler proves, um, his tactics prove to be pretty effective uh, in this Spanish Civil War, and it serves as an early warning signal. You know, this is go, goes back to 1936. Serves as an early signal for uh, the rest of Europe as to what's probably going to become a problem for uh, a lot of other nations other than just uh, Spain. Okay, uh, just got that one. Here we are. There we go. Okay, uh, so if we go over to the other side of the uh, Eurasian continent, uh, Japan invades China. Uh, essentially what you're looking at here, uh, Japan industrialized uh, right about the same time as um, you know, England, France, Germany, and the United States. And when you industrialize, you need raw materials and natural resources. So the obvious place to look was um, to China. They start in uh, Manchuria, they work their way south. They eventually invade other uh, Pacific islands, including the Philippines, which they actually take from the United States. We have to go in and liberate the Philippines uh, during World War II. And if you want to look at, uh, you know, World War II atrocities and war crimes, look no further than the uh, massacre of Nanking. Um, actually included a link here. Uh, you'll be able to access that um, at the at the end of the video, uh, and and uh, see. There's a short trailer here on a, a movie on the uh, massacre of Nanking, somewhere between. Uh, 30,000 and 300,000 civilians lost their lives uh, in this invasion of, of the city of Nanking. Okay, uh, so now let's get to uh, the specific uh, German aggressions that are, really are seen as the direct um, uh, actions that lead to war. The first one, Hitler annexes Austria. He uh, creates a, an alliance with this German-speaking nation. A lot of them so, see themselves as ethnically German, or at least ethnically connected to Germany. Um, this is a direct violation of the Versailles Treaty. Hitler himself is actually Austrian. He's not German. Uh, so, um, you know, here's the first case in which uh, you know, England and France specifically are saying, okay, you can do this, but nothing else. You know, that line in the sand which Hitler continuously crosses. This is what we call appeasement. And uh, in this case, appeasement did not work. All right. Here we go. Hitler takes the Sudetenland. Here's another one, uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, this area just outside here. Um, he demands that uh, Nazi Germany take the Sudetenland because it is ethnically kind of uh, similar or ethnically uh, uh, connected to Germany. And the Munich Agreement, you know, here's, here's uh, uh, England and France, Chamberlain specifically, says, okay, you can, you can have this, but nothing else. And that's another example of, you know, that appeasement that, that just does not work. Okay, uh, August 1939, the Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact. Uh, here's another dictator that we haven't even quite come across or discussed yet. Um, uh, uh, Joseph Stalin takes over in, in the USSR. Um, not, also, not a good dude, but um, you know he ends up part of the Allies because of this Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact that 
um, that Hitler will eventually break. Okay, and then finally, the September campaign, uh, September 1st, 1939, Nazi Germany invades Poland. And this is the final straw, uh, you know, the straw that breaks the camel's back, as it were, that uh, ultimately results in uh, England and France declaring war on uh, Nazi Germany. And very quickly, uh, or within just a matter of months, by the summer of the following year, by June of 1940, uh, France has fallen. Here's uh, English and both tr French troops fleeing Dunkirk, getting on whatever boat they can to flee the, across the English Channel and, and head over into England, because in just a few months, uh, Hitler's blitzkrieg style of warfare um, conquers, goes in and takes pretty much all of France. Okay, um, seeing the, uh, you know, the U.S. really wanted to stay out of the war. There are a lot of really outspoken uh, isolationists, probably the most famous among them is the Charles Lindbergh, said, yeah, this is a European problem. The U.S. needs to stay out of it. But uh, FDR President Franklin Roosevelt uh, kind of sees what's, what's coming down the line, and uh, he actually, in September 1940, um, this is over a year before we actually enter the war, um, creates the first military, uh, peacetime military draft in U.S. history, and I believe the only in U.S. history. Okay, uh, additionally, kind of pushing ourselves towards war, the U.S. towards war, the Lend-Lease Act, uh, March 1941, uh, designed to lend ammunition, any, any weaponry, any defense tools um, to England or specific, a little bit more specifically, any country whose defense is vital to the U.S. And yeah, that basically means England. Here you go, England. Take what you need. Defend yourself because you're our buddies and we want you to win. Okay, uh, June 1941, Hitler invades the USSR, and that's kind of how uh, the events, he double-crosses um, uh, uh, Joseph Stalin, and that's how Stalin ends up on the Allies' side. Granted, again, not a really great dude, but um, because of that, uh, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, and I believe the correct term for that uh, these days is frenemy, so that's... Uh, the Soviet Union. Okay, and then in very rapid succession, secession, um, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Uh, Japan attacks Pearl Harbor, a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. Um, that's an attempt to knock out our Navy before we have a chance to mobilize and actually wage war against them. Doesn't, I mean, it's effective, but it's not entirely effective because they missed our, our aircraft carriers, and if our aircraft carriers had been in port at the time, it would have been much more j damaging than it than it was in reality. Okay, so the very next day, uh, we declare war on Japan. That enough is enough. Uh, that is clearly a declaration of war. So uh, December eighth, nineteen forty one, we declare war on Japan, and lastly, as a result of that, on December eleventh. 1941, Germany declares war on the United States. We're the only nation to receive a formal declaration of war uh, from Germany. Everywhere else, he just kind of invades and then declares war. Uh, but that's, that's our claim to fame here. And that's how uh, World War II starts in a nutshell. Thanks for tuning in.